Shalom les friends, this is wonderful to be with you. This is Israel First, a program will bring you news and interviews from the land of Israel. And today again we are very grateful for uh, David Nekritman who came again and is going to speak about uh, Shabbat. And because there is a lot of things to discover and um, David is also the uh, executive director of CGCUC, which means Center of Jewish and Christian Understanding and Cooperation, which is very important. It's a, very, uh, it's a dynamic uh, organization and there is a lot of things happening here in the land of Israel and we are going to speak to you a bit more about all these things and you will see during the program uh, that we are doing. Uh, we're doing some Bible studies right now, which is very exciting between Jews and Christians in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, David was born in America. He made Aliyah, came here in Israel with his family. And he has a beautiful uh, wife and three children. And they live in Natania, yes. which is on the coast of uh, Israel. And uh, he's in also a Bible college with Oral University. Oral Roberts University oh. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's it. Have you finished now with them? Oh, no, I have four classes left. Four classes left. Yes. Almost, almost, almost there. finished. So thank you again. Oh, pleasure to be here, Natalie. I know. And uh, so we'll have a very interesting discussion about Shabbat. Correct. So, so just to put it into a frame, mm -hmm. so the first thing that was sanctified in the Bible we would think it would be some type of space. God creates the world. Mm -hmm. Then God goes and says, well, this particular building is where I'm going to hang out for a while. Mm -hmm. And this is where you're going to worship me. That would be sort of our way of understanding God in particular. Mm -hmm. Especially if you live during Abraham's time, whether it be Mesopotamia or Egypt, mm -hmm. there would always be these gods situated in buildings. So we would think the sanctification of God would be through space. But if you actually look at the Bible, the first thing that gets sanctified is time. In Genesis 2. Genesis 2 makes it very clear that the Sabbath is a time of sanctification. Mm -hmm. Holiness in God's world is all about time, which is a very unique perspective. But not only that, it's a revolution of understanding the world. We talk about killing time, wasting time as expressions that we usually have in our own vernacular of how we look at time, or if we're so busy we don't have enough time. In Israel, all the time we don't have time, which is a kolzman einzman, which is a famous expression here. But for, for someone who believes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. the concept of time means that no two moments are alike that each moment is an opportunity to sanctify His will. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? Because God sanctified time. And if God sanctified time, then it's important for me to be in sanctification with Him. And that's the Sabbath. And what's, it, what's great about the Sabbath it is a, a 25 hour period of time. 25? Okay. 25 hour period of time, which we, we celebrate the Sabbath in the Jewish world from Friday sundown to Saturday night mm -hmm. sundown. Which is the same that in the Bible, if you look, when God well, gives the days. Right, the sixth day, the, 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 you know, towards the end of the sixth day, right? But it says, and on the seventh day, God rested and he sanctified and he blessed the seventh day. So the because Sabbath, it's again, it's again a, a way for us to discover that like in the secular calendar, you start the day like midnight, and again, you go to the other midnight before God's calendar is when the, the moon goes, no, sorry, not when the sun goes sunset down. Sunset to, to yeah. next sunset. Mm -hmm. That's a day. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? Vahi era, vahi boker. It was evening, it was morning, and that was day one. Day two says the same thing. Mm -hmm. Jews are very much with the moon. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we know that as dark as it may be, there always is light in the morning. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's sort of like what life is all about. There are moments that we can actually see God and His complete revelation and glory, and there are a lot of times that we don't see God. Mm -hmm. But as long as I know that at the end, it all comes back to full circle that it, God's glory is here. So let me go back to the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the only commandment that predates 
the Sinaitic revelation. It's what God considers holy. And if we would look at the Sinaitic revelation, it is the commandment that has the most words to okay, it. So like in the Ten Commandments. Right, in the Ten Commandments itself, right? Thou shall not murder. I mean, that's only two words mm -hmm. in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. uh, thou shall not steal, another two words, mm -hmm. right? There's the beginning, I am the Lord uh, who took you out from Egypt and goes into this thing, you shouldn't do idol worship, which is a lengthy type of thing. And there's, a, there's an argument within Judaism and in Christianity how you categorize those commandments. But at the end of the day, the Sabbath commandment stands alone. And the Sabbath commandment has the most words. Right, which is kind of interesting because we live in a world that doesn't look at, looks at nine of the commandments, but not at this particular commandment, that somehow in the right, all these gadgets that are supposed to save us time make us so busy we have no time, and the Sabbath is the one that gets marginalized the most. So as I, I again, I, I want Christians to be good Christians. Uh, and part of the discussion that we have between Jews and Christians is that if we take God seriously and we take Scripture seriously, and this is not about salvation, this is about sanctification, then Christians should take the Sabbath commandment very seriously, not as a power hour in church, mm -hmm. but as a time to commune with God, with the family, and with the community. That's really what the Sabbath is about. I'm not, it's not a list of do's and don'ts. I'm not going to talk about how Judaism views the Sabbath and give you all the minutiae involved in that. I'm talking about a theological concept mm -hmm. of I am no longer the creator. Mm -hmm. I am appreciating God's creation within the time he told me to be with him. Mm -hmm. It is a commandment that literally starts, no matter if you do it or not, it's there. Sure. That's I, one of the yes, things. It's, yes, it's yes. happening now. For it to be important to you is you sanctify it in that moment with God. And you're totally enveloped in the commandment. There's another commandment that we're totally surrounded by. And that's during the Feast of Tabernacles where we're commanded to go into this booth. Because that's the commandment. Seven, seven days you shall live in a booth. So that every time I walk into a booth, I fulfill that command. But that commandment totally surrounds me. But once I leave the booth that commandment is no longer in play. Mm -hmm. It's only when I go back. The Sabbath is a commandment you can't leave. It's there. It envelops wow. you totally. Very interesting. So I'm not, so I just, I, I want to point out when we're talking about the Sabbath is a day um, where space mm -hmm. is the most important because God considered it important. Why? Because space is something get, that gets conquered. Mm -hmm. We love to conquer space as human civilization. But I can't share space with you. If I occupy a place on the floor, you can't be in that place. You can be ne next to me, but you can't be in the same place. Time is the only thing that we can share as two people. I mean, well, a lot of times when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm married for 18 years. And, you know, through the course you learn, you know, learn new things about a marriage. But one of the things you learn about is Sometimes that you could be sitting with your wife at the table mm -hmm. and your wife will say, you're not with me. And the, and the guy will say, well, I'm here. No, you're not. So I'm, I'm a moment share. I'm supposed to be, I'm not like, I think I'm in close proximity with my wife, but my mind is somewhere else. And therefore, uh, time is what really can be shared. And that's what's amazing about the revolution of the Sabbath is God wants to share time with us. Now yeah, it's... I'm chewing it. Yeah. You're processing the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I, said, I said to you, I'm not dealing with Judaism's intricacies of the Sabbath mm -hmm. as far as work and what is considered work or not. Mm -hmm. Let's leave that to the side for one moment. Mm -hmm. If we don't understand the why mm -hmm. of, of biblical, biblical faith, faith, the how can actually end up as idol worship at the end of the day because I'm only doing it for the sake of doing it, but I don't understand why I'm doing it. And you need to have intention of why we're doing things. So the why of Sabbath is the, of the complete understanding of the sanctity of time with God. Now, since God has made the human being in his image, and the purpose of a marriage is to, as Rabbi Pesach Liliki 
famously says, she, a woman is an azer, not someone to you know, be there at the good and bad times for you, but you are on a shared mission and a shared task. Azer, like a Azer is someone. And that's what, what's, what's happening is we are here together on a shared task. Mm -hmm. And we're doing this sanctified moment. And I can only do that sanctified moment if I'm completely divorced mm -hmm. from technology of creating. Anything that has to be in a creative moment is going back to weekday mm -hmm. living. And Sabbath living is a new type of living. And in fact, mm -hmm. all the days of the week is supposed to lead up to the Sabbath as opposed to what we usually think the Sabbath is. Thank God I have a day off. I can sleep now so I can rejuvenate so I can do work for the next six days. And the perspective of the Bible is very, very clear that no, every day is leading up to the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the center. It's not a, re it's not a restful moment from the six days of the week. So I just want to put that in a, in a framework. So when we're talking about anything else on the Sabbath, this is yes. what we're really talking mm -hmm. about at the end of the day. So can we speak also as when we see the six days, also like the six millennium, like again, Shabbat can give us a taste of what should be the seventh millennium. Right, so you're going to, or according to Jewish tradition, that the Sabbath is a taste of the, what the world to come will be like. Mm -hmm. And we say a taste, that means it's, yeah, it's, like, yeah, yeah, it's sure. like literally, you know, when you're, you're cooking something, and you want to make sure you have the right spices in it, and then you take that teaspoon and you taste it. That's what the, the Sabbath is now, now. Imagine, wow, what would the world to come look like? This tastes so good. Imagine what the world has come to be. Mm -hmm. Correct. That is a time. Why? Because this is a 25-hour period mm -hmm. where time is eternal. Mm -hmm. And that's what the world to come is about. It's an eternal time to be with God. Mm -hmm. So we get a little bit of it here one day a week. So that, that's sort of the perspective of what, you know, what that lesson is all about of understanding that the Sabbath is what they say is 60th of what the world to come is supposed to be like. But the interesting thing is you have to have Shabbat to be, um, be able to understand it. I mean, like, it's like we started as a family since 2003, which is a long time ago now when I look, time passing by. But I'm still discovering what is Shabbat. Right, so, let, so let, let's help with that for a second. Mm -hmm. So what do we mean? What, is, what does it mean to do the Sabbath? Uh -huh. Right? We, we tend to think in, in do's, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's really a moment to be. Right. Once we're doing, yeah, yeah, yeah. then we're taking away from the moment of being. Mm -hmm. And being is being being with God. Mm -hmm. So how do, we, how do we then commune with God? Mm -hmm. Well, we go to the synagogue. Remember, in Judaism, we're a national narrative. It's not individual people. We go to the synagogue to worship together. And the Psalms that we recite are going to be different than we recite during the week. And we do Psalms 95 to 99. Mm -hmm. And these are the beginning of our corporate worship together. Then we have a beautiful song um, on the concept of Shema, uh, not the Shema, as the Sabbath being a bride. Mm -hmm. This is a sort of a wedding ceremony right now. You're supposed to be happy, joyful. Walking into the Sabbath with all the worries of the week is not a Sabbath mindset at all. But you can only, I mean, that takes practice and a long time to do, and it's a journey. Ha, you, know, ha, you know, someone who's fired from work on a Friday, to actually be in a state of complete joy mm -hmm. is very hard. We don't even petition on the Sabbath for our own needs. Mm -hmm. It is a complete day of Hallel, of praise and glory to God. I don't even ask for healing from my personal healing. Mm -hmm. then people need healing. You can't even fast on the Sabbath. The only reason why if the Day of Atonement, if it falls on the Sabbath, that we actually fast, is because there's a biblical commandment that says on the 10th day, mm -hmm. you have to fast. Mm -hmm. So if the 10th day falls, okay, so this biblical commandment says you have to fast, mm -hmm. right? But even on the, on, the, on the Day of Atonement, there are certain prayers that we will not say normally in our liturgy. 
if it falls out on the Sabbath because it's the Sabbath. Yeah, it's like it's a whole concept is is so beautiful because you know more we discover deeply the Torah, the Word of God, more we we see and like living also here in Israel, uh, like Shabbat is getting so more precious. It's precious because if you look at the liturgy that we pray, mm -hmm. sing a new song to God. Right? You're supposed to be joyous. Mm -hmm. There's this new song that's supposed to come out of you. That can only, your creative process can come from two places. The blues, feeling really depressed, mm -hmm. which is not what Sabbath is about, mm -hmm. or real joy. Mm -hmm. and, there, and in Judaism, there are different levels of joy. Mm -hmm. um, so I would look at the, the series of psalms that we recite on a Friday mm -hmm. evening that will help to better understand the Sabbath mindset. Mm -hmm. So that's Psalms 95 to 99. It's, it's Psalm um, 92 and 91 and 92, the so mm -hmm. Psalm of the Sabbath day. If you actually read the Psalm of the Sabbath day, it has nothing to do with the Sabbath at all. Mm -hmm. and how can you call this the Psalm of the Sabbath day? So that already gives you food for thought to like really look at these prayers as a way to, as a catalyst to understand what the Sabbath is really about. That's number one. Number two, we believe in, in Judaism that there are angels. I know many Christians also believe in angels, but we know that there are specific angels that accompany us on our way back home from the synagogue. And their purpose is, is whether or not we're living a covenant home lifestyle or not. Mm -hmm. They're the reporters. To go back. Which is interesting. Okay, so understand that. Messengers. The Sabbath first begins with the community mm -hmm. in corporate worship. Mm -hmm. Then we go home, so we're actually with our family. Especially these days, this is, you know, this is very important because we can live a lifestyle that we never eat with our family, never touch base with our family. And it's more than texting or, or giving an email. You have to be in that moment with your family. And here are angels coming with us, and we sing a song to them. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Asharu. So we're saying, peace to be under the angels that are here. And then we sing Proverbs 31. Mm -hmm. Now Proverbs 31 is a woman of valor. Mm -hmm. There are two reasons why we would sing the song. Number one, it is the, when the husband has a chance to acknowledge his partner in the mission of sanctifying God together. Mm -hmm. And her important role in building up the household mm -hmm. and building up the husband. So you get a chance to serenade the wife. In addition to that, the Sabbath is also known as the Shekinah. It is, mm -hmm. it is the female aspect of the God character. And so the woman of valor also incorporates the Holy Spirit in a Shekinah clothes, as we would say. Mm -hmm. And then I have a chance to bless my kids with two blessings. The one that's found towards the end of Genesis, where you bless that God should bless you like Ephraim and Manasseh, mm -hmm. and then we do the priestly blessing. I get to have this role of blessing my children. Now I can tell you, because I grew up with it, I, ne I, I never understood the significance of it mm -hmm. until doing Jewish-Christian relations for the last 16 years, because when I had pastors or Christians coming to my table for a Sabbath meal on a Friday evening and they saw a father bless their kids, that was the moment of, of tremendous impact and they cried. And I never understood why they were crying. And they explained, we don't have this. Imagine if fathers would bless their kids more often. And we give, we say bless that God should bless you like Ephraim and Manasseh because Ephraim and Manasseh, first of all, are the two brothers that are the ones that get along mm -hmm. in Genesis, you know? Cain and Abel didn't work out too well. No. And Ishmael and Isaac and not Esau and Jacob, right? not too much, right? And here we have Ephraim and Manasseh, two brothers, but more importantly, they grow up in Egypt mm -hmm. that is the, I mean, paganism galore, yet they retain their faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want my kids to have that blessing. So no matter where they go in life, mm -hmm. they, they have that God should protect them to keep the faith 
even if they have to be in circles that are just as bad as Egypt. Mm -hmm. And secondly, the priestly blessing. This is a, a blessing that God tells the priest to give over to the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I have an opportunity to invoke that blessing to my kids. And there's a lot of, I mean, that's a, that's a show by itself what the priestly blessing means. But there's a lot of nuance in those blessings in the Hebrew. So that's sort of just the beginning of the taste of how you enter the Sabbath. The community, mm -hmm. the family, mm -hmm. and then... And the, the blessings. And the blessings. And the blessings. Yeah. I know that for us when we started, we didn't know anything. But we knew, going back to the scriptures, that, as you say, is part of the Ten Commandments. And we're like, hey, guys, now... And we, we, we moved house, and we said, okay, now, like, new house, new home knew something, and, and we started to have Shabbat Friday evening, the family around with a nice meal, yeah. and learning slowly, slowly, and seeing the, in, the importance of it. The Sabbath saved the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Sabbath are our great cathedral. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, I agree, and I think one thing was very important for us, it was to see that it wasn't the church first, it was the family first. And it's so, like the unity, the, the unit of the family was so important. And that sometime in the type of churches where we're going, it was like almost like the church was before the family. And I was like, hey, no, this is my family first. And, and we need to be, we need to, to be, we need to read the Bible together. We don't read the Bible just in, at church. We, we leave it here. This is the first place we want to. So we've, we've done a lot of, uh, of But what's changing. important is that even at the table, what I do with my kids, now there's something in Judaism that we do a Torah portion of the week. Mm -hmm. We divide the Bible into uh, Sabbath portions mm -hmm. from Genesis to the end of Deuteronomy. But what I actually do at the table mm -hmm. is discuss heavy stuff, mm -hmm. like deep concepts and go over scripture, things that we usually take for granted growing up. Mm -hmm. I try to like, dissect them and build them up as building blocks and let the kids be involved in it. Because at the end of the day, covenant was given over to Abraham because he would teach mm -hmm. the next generation. Yes. And if we are covenant carriers, mm -hmm. the best place to do it in a sanctifying moment with God, regardless whether we were observing this, but if I am observing this and I'm sanctifying this moment, then this is a covenant moment I can have with my kids uh, then teaching them what it says in the Shema, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through, through 9, mm -hmm. right? That I should teach this to my kids. What am I teaching? I'm teaching Scripture and letting them know that this is something that they need to carry on, mm -hmm. and that's how we connect spiritually. So it's not just having a meal so I feel good inside. The meal yeah, has to sure. also be spiritual manna mm -hmm. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and that can only be done by teaching the kids and having the kids involved, or maybe they themselves bring a, a message at the table because they're looking at in the scripture themselves and learning from them. I mean, I, I, I really pray that Christian will discover that. Like we, we are doing this program for people to learn and but also like to start. I mean, we, we started in 2003 and, and, and he has given something to the family as you say, I think, but sometimes it's difficult to put words on it. But I right. think it's like you say, it's like sanctification. Like the home is something very important. The whole thing is the home. Mm -hmm. if, if you can't allow schools to educate your kids, mm -hmm. the education really comes from home. And if we go ahead and leave it to everybody else, mm -hmm. then we're having problems. If you don't have the Sabbath coming in, how do you really have family? Thank you for speaking about Shabbat, which is a very interesting uh, concept and uh, we can always learn more. And uh, from David and from me, bye-bye from now. So today we are looking at the seventh letter of the Aleph Bet and it's called Zayin, okay? And it corresponds to the number seven too which is interesting also because the, so the name we say is Zayin. We can see also some names, which is like Zot, which means this, and Ze, which means that. 
uh, for feminine because you have in, in Hebrew feminine and masculine. So they will be masculine, that will be feminine. Okay? And which is very interesting because we spoke about the six first letter and we could see that Vav was like it was showing the six letter was showing the six cardinal points like south, east, west, and up and down. But the seven is a focal point, which is again interesting to see because Shabbat is the focal point of the week. Again, in Hebrew, for you to know, when you have Shabbat and after you have Yom Rishon, Yom Shini, which means the first day, the second day, the third day, like it is written in Genesis. They don't have name like Monday, Tuesday or Sunday, okay? It's, it's the first day, the second day, and obviously we say like Shabbat is the seventh, the seventh day. So it's very interesting because when you say Yom Rishon, it means that it's connected to Shabbat. It's the first day after Shabbat. So it's very important, like God has created Shabbat and he said, now is the day where I'm resting. I've created for six days and now I rest. So this is the letter Zion that we've seen. So every letter in the Hebrew alphabet really carry something for us to understand of the pattern that God has given in the Bible, in creation, and for us to know him more. And this is just wonderful. So this is the last letter that we've done together. And uh, we will see you next time. See you. Bye. Thank you, our friends, to be with us again today. And don't forget, we are speaking about the land, the people, and the language from Israel first, from David, and from me. Bye from now. Bye.